right guys how y'all doing nick the nutter buster hope y'all had a good memorial day weekend uh sorry i didn't get my video out on on the weekend like i usually do i was too busy partying having a grand good old time you see i took the uh took the boat out took the canoes out but uh today we're gonna be going we're gonna prep a little piece of land i got one more day off i uh, took some time off wife went back to work so I got a day to myself. Uh, we're gonna come back and do some yard work, but before we do that, we're gonna go prep some trees. I'm gonna just kind of walk y'all through that. Um, I'm gonna be prepping a tree. It's an island, so I'm gonna be taking the kayak, taking my saddle, taking my bolts. And I've actually kind of got me a jig made over here on my fence post. Oh, you can see. And I've just been painting them up, kind of keep them keep them on the down low so that none of y'all other Alabama saddle hunters come out here and hunt my spots for me. Uh, but we're going to get everything loaded up. We're going to throw the kayak in the water in my backyard and we're going to go prep a tree. A long way down. Let's go get it done. So this place we're going to hunted it three times last year. All three times I've seen deer. It's about a 15 minute paddle away from my house. I can launch down my back steps. Shoot up here pretty easy. Haven't really seen any signs of anybody else hunting it. Uh oh. It's a little piece of high ground out in the middle of the swamp. It's got some real good acorns. It's got like swamp chestnut acorns. It's got some over tooth acorns. And uh, every time I saw deer, they were up by the acorns. So I found a good little cluster of trees and uh actually ended up climbing up one day and had a spike bedded down about 30 40 yards away from me just inside bow range and uh couldn't make a shot happen on him but we're gonna try to go back i'm gonna try to go back there we're gonna try to prep that tree i was in when i seen that spike All right, we made it. All right, so we made it to our spot. Um, doing a real lightweight, quick trip before the sun gets up. Um, you can kind of see here, I've actually, I'm wearing my saddle. Uh, got my trophy line pouch, kind of like a fanny pack when I'm sitting in my saddle. Uh, I just go ahead and I flip it around in my front and I get where I'm going. It's real easy just to turn it around to how you would normally wear it. Uh, So, and I hunt like that a lot of times too. So, um, but basically, all that I've got is got my, of course, my tree hopper drill. Um, I've actually got four bolts. These are actually uh, Allen bolts that a saddle hunter forum user, um, gosh, what's his name, Allegheny Tom. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, uh, but he sent me some of those to try out. So, mighty, mighty sweet of them. Uh, what we're using these for today is these four. Um, I always pull my bottom four bolts if I'm hunting somewhere other than my lease, somewhere where somebody else might possibly walk up on my stuff and try to hunt it. Um, but I've got those. Um, I've got my tree tether. Um, that comes in handy sometimes, second lineman's belt, or you can use it if I'm drilling with my hand drill all the way around the circumference of the tree for footholds. Um, helps sometimes to tether in so you can kind of swing around the tree feel a little bit safer than just with a lineman's belt on um, we also brought today some work gloves because I'm actually pretty bad allergic to poison ivy 
Um, and since I work all this job, my hands stay nice and silky smooth. So if I'm out here, you know, in the swamp beating around on a work day, I like to bring some gloves. Uh, we got trail packs for the mark our trail back to our boat. And then, of course, we've got our grade 8 bolts. So um, all total, we're going to be drilling 14 holes. That's going to get us 20 foot. And then we're going to do usually the last step plus four is my ring of steps around the tree. Um, prepping somewhere like this and then I'm going to pull the bottom four when I go so that way my first bolt's 10 foot off the ground the odds of somebody seeing that are very very small uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark spin the camera around a little bit so you can see so you can see I've pulled my boat up inside the shoreline uh, and if I'm hunting, I pull it up a little further because I don't want anybody to know where I'm hunting. Um, but that's going to be out of view for most passers-by. We actually just had some people come by before I started filming. And they had no idea I was here. Uh, but we're going to mark, I think, this tree right here. And you can see it's already got poison ivy growing on it. But we're going to take our trail tacks. We're going to put... Three reflective markers. Now these won't be visible to anybody riding by on a boat, but they will be visible to yours truly. Um, and that just makes sure that when I come up here next time uh, and drag my boat, make sure I can easily get back to my boat. Because if something happens and you can't find your boat out here, you are just SOL. That's just that's a bad, bad day. It's a short paddle, but a very long swim. So you can see my tacks. You can see my boat. And uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to ease back here. You can actually already see. That's old deer tracks. So this whole place has been underwater since Thanksgiving. So I don't know if those are uh, tracks that have been preserved underwater from last season or not but this area does get some deer movement but we're going to walk probably not 100 yards back and I'm going to show y'all where we're going to set up but this is it nice little clearing not really need any shooting lanes or anything because it's fairly open and you can actually see from last year I don't know if you can see straight up ahead you can see that tree has trail tax in it. Hopefully I ain't got no poison ivy growed up on it yet. So this is the tree. Those tax look fairly good considering they were most likely underwater. But we're gonna be climbing up there. That deer last year, he was bedded. Actually right over here by this log. So probably closer to 20 yards away. And they're not going to be bedded out here now because everything's wet, but by fall, this will dry up some. And hopefully there'll be some deer movement on it. And this will be slightly more open. But for all you, uh, you guys that hunt up north, this is what an open area looks like in South Alabama. Open just means you can walk through it without crawling. So let's get to work and get out of here. It's already hot. That's it. Got our uh, got our trail tax marked in and out. So we've got a uh, we got a GPS trail, breadcrumb trail that we can follow. Uh, we got a compass bearing, and I'm gonna go home and make a note of that so I can review that before I come out and hunt it next year. So I can get to it by compass, I can get to it by GPS, and then I can also get to it uh, 
following reflective markers to and from in the dark. Those reflective markers just really help give you peace of mind uh, out here in the dark. Like right now, you know, I'm, I'm standing in boot deep water. It's a, about a four foot tall cypress knee. Uh, so you, any, any little bit of getting turned around out here can just really, really be bad for your morale and start messing with your head. Uh, I try not to do it if at all possible. So it is, I guess, I guess by now we're getting up close to about nine o'clock, which is my cutoff point for working. Uh, this is pretty easy. Um, I guess I've got now about seven trees that I've prepped during the month of May. Um, so if we can keep that pace up throughout the summer until it's time to hunt, we'll be doing pretty good. I'm um, trying, to, trying to really heavily ramp up my presets. Um, I hunted a couple of them last year, and it's just hard to beat the convenience of them. Running and gunning is good, but I've been hunting some of these areas long enough. If you've been seeing deer, killing deer, you might as well go ahead and prep it. So for now, y'all kind of seen start, start to finish, uh, you know, launching the boat and everything. This is pretty, pretty typically how I hunt, the type of terrain I'm hunting in. Um, definitely comes with its own set of logistical problems uh, but I like it it's definitely an adventure every time you go out and looking forward to hitting it next season looking forward to coming back and hunting this spot and maybe hopefully we can do a follow-up video maybe we can come back here and stick a deer or a hog so I'll take it easy and I'll see you next week